Hey everybody, Jazzy here. The other day, Clay rolled out a very interesting update for Don't Starve Together. Most of the changes were miscellaneous fixes, which included this hilarious bug that basically made Mac Tusk's blow darts completely harmless. So I hope you stocked up on walrus tusks and father meat while the getting was good. It also addressed an equally hilarious bug where a player could hide items inside of Wobi and switch characters, effectively sealing off those items from other players inside the Celestial Portal. Now the items just burst out of your best friend onto the ground. Also, Wobi now has a nose at all times, even when flexing. But most importantly, we saw some massively significant changes made to Walter's slingshot, and these additions are going to make it an actual viable weapon to use during certain boss fights. Here's what's new. First, the slingshot no longer locks the character into an animation which can't be interrupted by player commands. This has been my biggest issue with the slingshot from the start, even more so than the underpowered damage, the need to prototype ammo, and the cost of that ammo. The long animation up until now has basically strangled this weapon's potential. Now, the ability to cancel attack commands is very important in Don't Starve Together, and the main reason is because of lag. The truth is, on any server, there is a delay between the time you hit a button and the time that command gets executed by the character. If you have lag compensation set to predictive, you won't notice it, but the input lag is definitely still there. This means that in a fighting situation, after you hit the attack button, you don't know the exact moment when your character will start to move in to attack. So if this happens too late in the kiting window, you need to cancel the attack. Otherwise, you just end up taking tons of damage when your character commits to an action that won't allow enough time to dodge. I can't think of any other weapon in the game that actually locks you into the attack, not even staves or blow darts. So there was never a reason for this to be any different with the slingshot. Now, Walter in particular is extremely vulnerable when firing his slingshot while riding Wobi. If he gets hit one time, then Wobi bucks him off and runs away leaving Walter in a long recovery animation, during which time he can still take damage. If the enemy pursues Walter, then there's no guarantee that he can safely remount Wobi before getting smacked off again. So it is a very big deal to not get hit while riding. Because of that, it seems even more unfair that the slingshot would trap Walter into a long firing animation that could easily be interrupted by an attack. So I applaud this change immensely. I think it's going to open up the potential of this weapon in several new ways. The other new big change is to the range of the slingshot. This essentially puts another half of a pitchfork tile distance between you and your target, which might not seem like much, but can make all the difference in the world when you're getting chased by a giant allergy machine and it adds priceless extra time onto the kiting window while fighting. Because of these changes, it has suddenly become much more practical to fight certain bosses with the slingshot. And to illustrate this for you today, I am fighting Ancient Guardian using a slingshot loaded with cursed rounds. The mechanics of this strategy were brought to my attention by Swanky Samyad, to whom you should all subscribe. He knows more about the game than I ever will, and his guides are ridiculously useful. Now, this is a perfect example of a fight where that Wobi speed boost is a game changer. You need at least a 30% speed boost to reliably kite Ancient Guardian, and Wobi's 66% boost at max hunger is more than sufficient. The reason the slingshot is so amazing for this fight is because you can cancel his charge with the slingshot. As long as a hit registers after he begins his charge, that hit will stop him dead in his tracks. Now, in order to time these shots to connect during the charge, you will want to begin the attack before he starts running. His hind leg will paw the ground three times before each charge, and assuming you don't need to move any closer to fire, you will want to hit that attack button on the second paw. This will get off the shot right as he charges, and the ammo will connect mid-charge. You can do this over and over again until he dies, which actually takes less time than the traditional kiting method. The reason is because you can usually only get in one to two hits between charges, but this method cancels the charge animation so you can attack more frequently. A few notes of precaution. First, you will want to be wearing some good armor. You can do a thulacite suit for high damage reduction, plus a pioneer hat to mitigate sanity loss. Honestly, it's not hard to dodge attacks, but if you do get hit, you don't want to immediately go insane or die. Second, you want to reposition yourself after every hit. Minotaur will nudge closer to you after a charge, and you want to maintain that maximum slingshot distance so you can time your shots correctly. 
If you hit him too early, it won't interrupt the charge, so if he does move towards you, then at least you are already moving out of the way. This is why the ability to cancel your attack animation is so important. If you lag, then you might not start firing until it's too late, and he'll hit you before you can fire a shot. So before this rework, I'd say this method was way too risky. Now, I know I got into this with a few viewers on my Crab King guide, the argument that any strategy that cancels an enemy's attack is inherently a cheese method because the attack was meant to be dodged. I think that this boss fight disproves that argument for a number of reasons. First, you are still in danger of getting hit. Every attack carries the possibility of a badly timed shot, which can send you hurling off your speed provider. The consequences of even one hit are substantial, and there's absolutely no comparison of this to the safety of swinging a spear at Ancient Guardian from behind a pillar. Second, the method is not free or even cheap. It took me around 132 cursed rounds to kill the guy, which works out to 14 Thuicite Fragments and 14 Nightmare Fuel. But if you think that this is too expensive, then consider the cost of a single Thuicite Crown. 4 Thuicite. That's 24 Fragments. So you still need to do a bit of ruins clearing to make a sizable amount of ammo, but with typical ruins generation you should still have plenty left over for armor and amulets. By the way, I still think it's totally acceptable to cheese this fight. But having cheesed the poor dude over and over, I think this new method makes the fight way more interesting and engaging without being overly repetitive or long-winded. Unlike my guides. So there you go, Walter can pew pew Ancient Guardian into the dirt. I will be taking another look at the slingshot in the weeks to come, and I'm really interested to see what other strategies emerge from this rework. Let me know in the comments what you've been using the slingshot for lately, and thanks for watching. See you next time.